Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Bigginhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Here's your news now. Cabrini Day was this past Tuesday, November 13th. Let's take a closer look. An annual celebration of Cabrini's heritage and mission, Cabrini Day honors the college's namesake, St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. To kick off the day, a student poster session was held in the Nerny Fieldhouse, highlighting academic excellence. This year's program, entitled We the People, Democracy and Diversity, started off with the presentation of this year's Mastronardi Award winners, Amy Roden and Jessica Marone, who have demonstrated outstanding contributions to community service projects and civic engagement. CRS Regional Director Mark Schnellbacher gave the program's keynote address, where he spoke to how the Middle East has changed since the Arab Spring began two years ago. The conflict in Syria shows no signs of ending anytime soon. Eventually, I think Bashar al-Assad and his circle of courtiers will lose their grip on the levers of power in Syria, but not before the Syrian people suffer significantly more murder, mayhem, and destruction. At this point, in predicting what a successor Syrian regime will look like, your guess is as good as mine or anybody else's. But one thing we can be sure of, the Syrian conflict is not just another Arab uprising, and the geopolitical consequences of how it ends and what comes after it are enormous. Following the keynote, a panel of students and staff fielded questions from the audience. You know, and in, in visiting Libya, um, it was very interesting for me, having, having been in other areas of the Middle East, to now being in an area that had been occupied by a dictator for over 40 years and learning what that had done to repress not just their culture and their history, they couldn't have art, they couldn't have music in schools. They were told what they can learn, they could told what they could read. And you didn't go over and beyond that because if you did, you were at, you know, Gaddafi's uh, forces. You were jailed, you were beaten, you were raped. For location, I'm Generos de Giacomo. Thanksgiving is right around the corner, but for some area residents, this holiday season will not be spent with families. Located in Norristown, the Coordinated Homeless Outreach Center is a safe haven for those with nowhere to stay. Let's see what staff and residents of the Outreach Center are doing this Thanksgiving and how they withstood Hurricane Sandy. What you see on TV about homeless is not always the right perception. What you see in the movies is not who they are. It's not their regular people. I lost my job and then I lost my home, practically at the same time. I used to work for a plastics manufacturing company for 18 years, and uh, because of a, an illness, I had to resign my position, and um, I was out for a while and pretty much lost my apartment right after that. But I've been fortunate. I'm here. Um, our plans for Thanksgiving is usually the same, just different clients. Uh, we usually clean up the chalk and decorate with um, any decorations that we have and try to make it festive and, and fall-like. And we have overwhelming amounts of food. I think for the first two weeks, we have people just coming in from the community, from different churches, and really just giving great Thanksgiving meal, and us as staff and consumers really get together and have a good meal and talk, laugh. I'll probably be here for Thanksgiving. Just Saturday, we had a church come in and do a Thanksgiving dinner. I really don't know. I really don't know what my planes are. They're up in the air. Um, well, we just have a new uh, upgraded program, which I'm the head of, um, just assisting them with finding jobs and getting them apartments, like actually going out with them, making the phone calls to the landlords and, and realtors, and actually going out with them and looking at the spots and making sure they can afford it and helping them with getting the money to get into the apartment. The director is pretty helpful. She'll help me any way she can, give me a token for the bus to go for my interviews or to find a job. I don't know what I would do without them. I mean, they're they're so kind. I, I mean, they're they're 
they do anything for you. Whatever you need, whatever you ask for, they're, they're, they help you. And if they can't, they guide you to somebody else that can help you, like to your caseworker. And, but I've had, a, I've had a wonderful experience here. Because this is just a camping trip for me. Some people are calling it their home, but I'm calling it just a camping trip. Well, it does, it does help people, but right now I believe there's like 141 people on the waiting list to get in here. Yeah, so I'd rather get out of here as fast as possible. That way, the next person who's on the street can come in here instead of being cold out there. I would just tell anybody else that's in the same situation just to keep their heads up and be positive at all times, no matter how down you get. We try our best to make it homey every single day. Um, people have their days, you know, that they don't want to be here. Um, and it's understandable. They want to be around family. Um, we have the times when it's time for half of them to leave and they don't want to leave because we are family. So it's like a contradiction being here, but we try our best every day to make them feel like they're at home, like we're a big family. So it's not just on the holidays. You may know her from 6ABC, but just this past weekend, news anchor and reporter Lisa Thomas-Lowry was in a car accident in Ardmore. She was driving her SUV near County Line Road and Roberts Road when another car struck her car. She would have been worse off if she weren't driving an SUV, according to a first responder. She was taken to Paoli Memorial Hospital, where doctors were especially careful with her head injury because Lowry suffers from a neurological disorder. She was treated immediately and was released right away. Also, this weekend in Philly, the Franklin Institute brings Titanic, the artifact exhibition, to life. Enjoy a walk from the ship's construction all the way to its tragic ending in chronological order. There will even be a recreation of the Grand Staircase where Rose and Jack, of the movie's fame, met. Tickets are $29, which includes entrances into the exhibit plus all other Franklin Institute exhibitions. For more information, visit campusphilly.org. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go to Rob for this week's sports update. In Cabrini Sports, Cavalier Fall Sports are left with bitter taste in their mouths following tournament losses this past weekend. Men's soccer fell to number 15, Susquehanna University, in the first round of the NCAA tournament on Saturday. They lost 6-5 following a seemingly never-ending eight rounds of penalty kicks. Women's soccer also lost to the NCAA tourney opener with a 5-0 loss against number 17, Carnegie Mellon University. The team was held a shot for the first time since October 2008. Volleyball was swept by Bethany College in the semifinal round of the ECAC tournament on Saturday. They earned the right to face the Bison after a sweep of Lebanon Valley College last Wednesday in the first round. Basketball season is upon us already, as men's basketball will open this weekend with a return to Virginia in the Virginia Wesleyan Marlin tip-off tournament. After a great basketball season last year, ending with a tough loss in the NCAA final, let's take a look at the basketball team and how they are getting ready for another great season with high goals. Ever since uh, uh, we lost in the championship last year, we uh, been working. We probably took a week off and then went right back in the gym, weight room, um, working hard. I know my other roommates. Fran, Goran, and AJ, we've been working all summer, so just to achieve, you know, what, what we want to achieve, achieve our goals next season. We start practice October 15th, uh, practice is intense every day, I mean, we pick it up every day, um, but, like, pre-practice, stuff like that, like, we've just been, like, hitting the weights and getting our shots up and all that, just making sure everything's going smoothly. Um, looking forward to the win, uh, go out and play every game, like it's your last, and, uh, just play together, play as a unit, and uh, just have fun doing it. Unit! It's not just a team, like we're a unit, we're one, we're a family. We all together, we win together, so it's everything. We're just going to bounce back this year and just see where it goes with it. Um, we're just ready to compete and get back out there. Uh, we just go hard. Unit one, we're all one, we're not just 
five individuals on the court or 15 individuals out playing on the team. We're all one. We're here for one reason and one reason only. Women's basketball will open this weekend in the Swarthmore College tip-off. Both their home openers are scheduled for this coming Tuesday against Cross Street rival Eastern University in the famed Battle of Eagle Road. In Philly sports, the Eagles find themselves three games under the 500 mark with a 38-23 loss to the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday. Michael Vick left the game in the second quarter with what Coach Andy Reid called a pretty significant concussion. Rookie quarterback Nick Foles is expected to take the reins this Sunday against the Washington Redskins in the nation's capital. Are you as excited to see? Are you excited as I am to see what Foles can do? Tweet us your thoughts at Location News. The Sixers moved to four and three following Monday night's 105 to 96 loss to the Milwaukee Bucks. The game was the genesis of a five-game homestand that will see Detroit, Utah, Cleveland, and Toronto make their ways to the Wells Fargo Center. The team also provided an update on center Andrew Bynum's knee injury. It is believed that the big man will not practice until mid-December and make his much-anticipated debut in a Sixer uniform until January or February 2013. This week's location athlete of the week goes to Eagles quarterback Nick Foles. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Foles era of Eagles football. That was your weekly sports update. Be sure to tune in next week for an update on the Philly sports scene as well as the Battle of Eagle Road. Now let's go to Val for your trip around the nation. Instead of celebrating Veterans Day, a community rallies for storm victims. Every year in New York City, the United War Veterans Council holds the annual Veterans Day Parade. This year, due to Hurricane Sandy, the council decided to collect winter coats for those affected by the storm. It's been a little over two weeks, and residents are still clearing debris from their homes. 113 deaths were recorded over several states, but there were 43 just in New York. According to Mayor Michael Bloomberg, he will continue his efforts to get life back to normal for those affected by Sandy. Thanksgiving isn't so thankful. The cost of turkeys has gone up 3% this year, according to a new survey conducted by the American Farm Bureau Federation. The new turkey prices aren't due to a lack of supply, because more turkeys are available this year. But it's most likely due to competing meat companies who are selling at a higher price than previous years, according to Fox News. The Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, commonly known as Obamacare, has been said by some to put a strain on small businesses after it was signed into law by President Obama in 2010. John Schneider, CEO of Papa John's Pizza Chain, stated that employee hours will be reduced and his cost of business will rise if Obamacare is fully enforced. Franchise owners will most likely be forced to cut hours because they won't be able to afford health insurance. Schneider said that having health insurance under Obamacare is good, but it's going to cost Papa John's roughly $8 million annually. That was your news from across the nation. Now here's Christine with your weekly entertainment update. It's official. Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber have gone their separate ways. The pair apparently called it quits earlier last week. Rumors are that the adorable couple ended their relationship, which started back in February of 2011, due to both of their hectic schedules. Here's the hoping that the two can remain friends. Mumford & Sons' new album, Babel, is this year's best-selling rock album by a mile. It posted the second largest debut of 2012. It would have been the biggest if it wasn't for Taylor Swift, and in less than two months, the album has already sold more copies than Justin Bieber's Believe and Carrie Underwood's Blown Away. Mumford will spend the foreseeable future on the road on their current tour schedule, which stretches all the way to April. Bradley Cooper was all smiles at the Silver Lining Playbook premiere at Tribeca Film Institute. But yesterday was a sad day for the sexiest man alive. Yes, that's right, the 37-year-old actor had to officially say goodbye to People Magazine's title as the sexiest man alive. And who will be taking his place this year? Magic Mike star Chatting Tatum has replaced Cooper as 2012's sexiest man alive. Let us know if you think Tatum is worthy of the title. Tweet us at Location News to tell us what you think. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's go to Bethany for your trip around the world. Earlier this week, the Syrian National Council elected George Sabra as the country's president. The council has 11 members, all of whom are from different religious and ethnic backgrounds. There is still an open seat within the council solely for a woman, but no women have run for the position. A group that organizes and documents anti-government actions released news that it would be breaking with the council shortly after the elected officials were announced. Due to the fighting between Syrian government forces and rebels raging for over a year, thousands of refugees have fled out of Syria. Due to the conflict, more than 35,000 people are dead. 
A country faces its sixth year of economic recession. In Athens, Greece, unemployment is growing. The unemployment rate stands at a record 25%. More than half of the young people are out of work, and for some who have been working since they were 15 have lost many customers due to families not being able to afford anything anymore. Many restaurants have shut down. Even apartment tenants have decided not to buy heating fuel because of the increased prices, where the country's debt health care spending has been cut due to the country's struggles. According to Fox News, they're fighting hard to manage something. Earlier this week, two Russian-made Iranian warplanes shot at a United States Predator drone in international airspace. The Pentagon chief spokesperson, George Little, answered questions regarding the incident this past week. According to Little, the aircraft was never in Iranian airspace. It was just flying in international airspace. The U.S. has relayed a message to the Iranians stating that the U.S. will continue to send surveillance flights over international waters for the security of the region. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Valerie Ruiz. And I'm Bethany Vigenhoe. Enjoy your Thanksgiving break, Cabrini.